Do you know what that says about our society? It says that the gendered conditioning is so strong that it can override conditions that make our brain totally, totally different. Oh, hi. Welcome to Spoonie Squared. I'm Becky, and today we're going to talk about 10 ways in which autism might show up in the workplace if you are a woman. Now, something I haven't talked about yet on this channel, but something which you very well may be aware of, is that autism can show up very, very differently in different people, and that gender can play a big part in how autism shows up. Do you know what that says about our society? It says that the gendered conditioning is so strong that it can override conditions that make our brain totally, totally different. So if autism can show up completely different in men and women because of societal conditioning, think about what else conditioning, gendered conditioning is doing across our society. Like, it's... You are probably here right now for, well, you may be here for a few different reasons. Perhaps you've just been diagnosed with autism and you just want to know a bit more about it to understand your own diagnosis. Perhaps you think you might be autistic and so you're doing what I'm, I did and gobbling up every single piece of information that you can possibly find to try and figure out what's going on. Maybe to try and figure out whether getting a diagnosis, going through the assessment is the right thing for you. And, uh, but maybe also you're here because you are not somebody who's neurodiverse and, or perhaps you've got a different uh, type of neurodiversity and you're actually wanting to find out more. So it might be because you know me already, but it might also be because you have important people in your life who perhaps are neurodiverse, who are autistic or who you think maybe or, and that might include kind of loved ones, but it could also include colleagues. And I would be particularly happy if people, if leaders of organizations, uh, of teams, were listening to this video because you actually care about creating inclusive cultures in your organization and you want to have a better understanding. Caveat to that piece, a caveat to everything, to be honest. Um, the way I, express my autism the way it shows up for me is not going to be the same for everyone it's a spectrum that doesn't just mean that it's a linear spectrum it's not it has very very different ways of showing up for different people so what i'm going to talk about today is based on research that i've done um, so that is research in terms of hearing other people's stories in terms of research studies and it is also based on my own experiences. So I'm gonna tell you the 10 ways in which I think it shows up for me, but that I know is also how autism can show up in the workplace for other people with specific focus on women. So number one, being out of work. <laughs> I've already talked about the fact that many people with autism aren't even in the workplace. And um, so that in itself is going to be a sign, like you're really struggling to, to get work, to keep work. Um, that's a sign already. And for me, the way that's shown up is not that I have, like I've never had a period of my life when I'm not working. Uh, because I just work all the time and if I don't, if I haven't got somebody else, well I'm an entrepreneur so like if I'm not working on a project that is uh, paying my bills then I'm working on the next thing that might pay my bills. So, um, so I'm always working on different things but what it's looked like for me is that I've not, I've not found that I'm able to stay in certain working environments for a particular period of time that working environments environments are often very hostile to me and it's led to a point of burnout multiple times and so um 
so often and there's many many reasons that people who with autism might be out of work but for me that's one aspect and actually all the other things i'm going to come on to in a minute are also going to perhaps explain why we might be out of work we might be very sporadic with our work something that i do and something that i love actually in terms of how i construct my working life is to have portfolio work so have multiple different strands of working which can then um it then means if one of them is feeling particularly toxic or difficult, it's easier to let it go. Um, so I don't know if that's such a good thing. It doesn't always help with the kind of routine aspects of things, but you can build a portfolio career that still has a lot of routine built into it. The second one is all about mirroring and masking. If, you're, if you've been looking up at traits of women with autism, mirroring and masking is the thing that's going to come up everywhere. As women, we both subconsciously and consciously are going to be mirroring other people in social situations. I should say, as autistic women, um, we will be doing that. And what that means is that, again, either subconsciously or co consciously, we are absorbing the traits of others around us to then be able to deliver back socially acceptable behaviour. And of course, in the workplace, there are very specific ways in which you are meant to show up. Um, and this is all to do with the culture of an organization, right? So for different cultures, you are meant to show up in different ways. And I've looked into this a little bit more because when I've talked about autism and mirroring and masking being a big part of it for me, a big sign for me, a lot of people have said, but doesn't everybody do that, especially in the workplace? And yes, many people do. Most people will be doing some kind of mirroring and masking in the workplace. You show up, right? Um, and you look for specific um, indicators that say that you are behaving in the right way for this organization, for this culture. This is what humans do. This is how we kind of form our tribes. And um, the, but what the studies say is it's less about the fact that we do do that mirroring and masking because again both both autistic people and neurotypical people might be doing this consciously or subconsciously but it's about the impact that that has and um, mirroring in autistic people can actually lead to a real lack of hope in your life like you can have such a high impact that it has a lack of hope and is much more likely to end up in suicidal thoughts than in neurotypical people and I think if anyone's out there kind of saying like what's the difference and somebody doesn't expect to show up at work and then end up feeling suicidal because they have to, because of all the energy they have to put into fitting in with other people. And I'm really sad to say that this is a situation that like I have definitely found myself in, thankfully, like not lots and lots of times, although I have found myself in this place of like no hope in terms of the workplace because it is just so draining and you just don't know how you're ever going to show up and advance in your career. So, um, so the signs would be that you're either finding yourself kind of really not knowing how to do the kind of social interactions that are expected in work and you're kind of constantly calculating like, where should I look? Um, where, where is that person looking? Should I be doing this? How do I hold my hands? How do I do this? What's the words I meant to say? What's the tone of voice? Um, or all of those kind of things going on in your head and the fact that that is having a big impact on you in terms of your energy levels and then likely in terms of your mood. The next one leading on from that, and actually what happened for me, it wasn't that the masking and mirroring was something that showed up first for me. What showed up first was this repeated pattern of burnout and of shutdown. So um, what I was finding over the course of my career was being in these places where I li did just literally feel like I had no hope. Like, what can I do when I've got no, like my energy is so depleted that I have got no idea how I pick myself up again. And, and I have, feel like I have no access to the support to help to pick myself up again. So if this is something that you're feeling, then it might be the sign that something else is going on. If, if just general day-to-day -day of work is leaving you so exhausted, 
that you have no hope left anymore. That's, I mean, regardless of whether that's autism or not, that's something that you should need to do something about. But for me, that was really the starting point of um, starting to kind of go down the journey of exploring whether autism was something that I had. And, and again, it's, some, it's something we don't read about much, but like, like I said, I, I genuinely think, and maybe there's a study to be done on this, about like how this mirroring and masking is actually identified as something that's going on. Um, and, and perhaps that this exhaustion shows up more in women because we are doing more covering up of our autistic signs. Um, whatever that might be for us. Also related to mirroring and masking is confusion about who you are. Sometimes I feel so strong about who I am, but those times are often when I've like done a meditation, <laughs> spent time away on my own, cleared it up again, kind of. And I think in some ways I'm strong about who I am because I find it impossible not to live to my values. So we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, but I also really struggle to say, if from a working perspective, this is what my skill set is, this is how I show up, this is my methodology, this is my, um, you know, this is who I am. And, and it's almost like I find it harder to do that for myself than other people do for me like other people seem to have quite a clear picture of who i am and i ask, often ask them to reflect it back and i think again it comes back to mirroring and masking that like we spend so much time almost taking on the masks of everybody else and so much energy doing that mirroring and masking that there's like this real loss of the sense of self um and because you're like losing so much energy, there's a loss of self-esteem as well. Sometimes I think my friends like get really frustrated because I'll say like, I need you to tell me who I am. <laughs> like, I need you to tell me who I'm good, what I'm good at. I need you to rem like remind me, put this mirror, put me in the mirror. Um, <laughs> and uh, so that, that might sound really narcissistic. Like I need to look at myself, but I feel like I'm constantly absorbing everybody else. And even on an energetic level, very much that I guess there's a kind of empath thing in here or something. Absorbing the energy of everybody else and allowing their energy to overtake me when what I really need to do is like try and let my energy shine but that really only comes from being by myself and being able to do projects in a way that works for me and kind of being able to lead those projects and have the space on those projects, have, have a lot of clarity um, that I develop for myself. The fifth thing is a discomfort in playing games in the workplace or like in lying or showing up not with integrity. This sounds so like, who likes lying? <laughs> who likes not having integrity and not sticking to their values? Um, but I see it again and again and again in the workplace that there's this kind of, I've said this before in videos, but like, there's this game playing um, and there's this kind of, I guess it's sort of a, a sugar coating, but I find it very passive aggressive. I find it really obvious. Maybe this is not an autistic trait, but I find it so obvious when people are not being, not acting with integrity. And I guess that this is because I'm very literal and this is what we're bringing to the party, I guess. This kind of piece about, I'm very, very literal. If somebody says that something's important to them and then they act differently, that's like so clear to me that that's going on and it seems to happen all the time. And I, if I do that myself, I have a lot of discomfort. I'm like, I cannot even stay and I'm can, like being in a workplace where you feel like you have to do that is so uncomfortable for me. Um, but I can't do it. Like, I just cannot be in that workplace. Um, and of course, sometimes you stick it out. You have to stick it out because you've got to pay your bills. But it, I, again, leads to burnouts, which I've already talked about. Like, it leads to shutdowns very, very frequently. Uh, it's just a horrible, painful place to continue to be in. And, and it's, again, indicates for me a pattern over my whole career of like just hitting a point of not being able to take it anymore. And like I said, a lot of that does come from this kind of having to suppress 
the obvious. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sure there is so much more to say about that. I feel like this is such an, um, such an endemic in our workplace is. <laughs> I, I, and it's, I, God, I hope we can change it. And then my sixth point is sort of related, I guess. The first one is to, the fifth point is about integrity. My sixth point is also about frustration in the workplace, but it's more to do with my specific skill set. And so often autistic people are very good at seeing, seeing things in a different way. They might be systems thinkers um, be able, and be able to see things, um, and certainly for me, kind of seeing complex systems in a certain way and how they interconnect. And what that means is sometimes there's an action over here that's going to impact something over here, but it's not linear. It's kind of all connected through different, different parts of the system. And um, I find it very, very obvious that when an action's taken over here, it's going to have an impact like over here somewhere else. So in this squiggly system, this complex world that we live in, in our organizations, like, there's always complexity and decisions have knock on effect. And, um, and sometimes to me that seems so clear and yet it's quite hard to communicate because, well, number one, communication is not always the easiest thing. Um, despite having done lots of work on it. But I think the, one of the reasons communication feels very, very hard, or I often feel misunderstood, is because I look at things as a system, and to me, the fact that A is linked to B is very, very clear. And for other people, they don't necessarily see that. So that can lead to a lot of frustration for me. It's like something is so obvious, like why are we not go like, just saying, yep, that's a thing, move on, um, rather than either ignoring it or kind of having to wait for like months for somebody else to suddenly be like, oh yeah, this thing's connected to this thing. It's like, <sighs> so frustrating. Number seven is the spiky skill set. And this is something I only really heard about. I think um, I initially heard about this from autism on the inside, this idea of the spiky skill set, and it suddenly like made so much sense to me because I've spent so much of my working life being like, how is it I find this so easy and I find this so hard? And it could be like totally related things. And um, so the spiky skill set is all about kind of having these skills that are really high level skills and then having other skills where it's like, you just don't feel like you've got those skills at all. And um, I think some of this is related to executive functioning and kind of especially when you, if you feel like you're in a place of overwhelm or anxiety, then there's certain tasks that are going to be harder. And then some of it is related to yeah, just having like some skills that are really, really easy and some that really feel like they're not. For me, the way it shows up is, well, often like I can, it's, it can be about kind of deploying an idea, like something f looks so clear and so obvious, and then as soon as you get going, especially if there's other people involved, it's suddenly so, so hard to make that thing happen. And so it can show up in that way, and it's to the point where I've actually like built up a bit too much of a kind of lack of self-belief now, and I kind of need to like take baby steps on certain things because I kind of know that I'm going to find it difficult to get from one place to another. And often, so like the reason this is often happening is the social aspects of the workplace. And if people, if there is a lack of clarity from other people, I find that really, really hard. If I've got certain energy I'm absorbing from other people, it's going to, just going to shut me down. Um, and some of the tasks I find really, really difficult to do are things that people would find very, very simple. Um, Sometimes I find them quite simple <laughs> once I actually get my head into them, but um, things like sending messages, um, you know, yeah, it's talking to people. And, and I also find myself, for example, if I've got a working environment where it's, fe it's not feeling good to me, that the overwhelm of that 
again, this is the kind of shut down piece, the overwhelm of it can just make everything else feel impossible. It's almost like it's this like massive ball of wool, <laughs> um, not even wool, like cotton wool. Um, and it's like so big and dark and it just surrounds me and engulfs me. And, and then I'm trying to find those things that I want to do and that I can do and I know I can do, but like, I just can't find the thread to get to those things because it's being engulfed by this big black cotton wool. Um, so I think that's where the kind of spiky skill set comes in. Number eight is about being obsessive. Um, and, and we know there's some kind of overlap with like OCD type traits, perfectionism and autism, um, and this kind of discomfort with things not sitting right. And so something that I've found over my career is that there are certain things that I might suddenly kind of hold on to and not want to let go of and kind of really need to see them to fruition. And and this obviously this is how special interests show up as well. So it's sort of like the special interest projects or it could show up in terms of like certain tools that I want to use or like, yeah, it's just certain things I want to pursue. And if I don't get a chance to pursue them, then it can feel very, um, again, like very difficult. So yeah, I don't know if that's something that shows up for you. It's something that I hadn't thought about that much until I started, until I'd had my diagnosis and I'm starting to look at how I, how that materializes. And I think, oh yeah, it's like, why was I like so into using a certain, tool for something um, or wanting to really use a certain type of software you know that I enjoy using and um, and honestly like I don't think it was an ego thing because um, let's <laughs> I don't think like in with autism I, I honestly don't think ego shows up in quite the same way as it does neurotypically that's something I haven't looked into it'd be very interesting to look into that um, but it's more of a like this compulsion to use those things number nine, we're almost there everyone, um, is the repeated pattern of showing up in vulnerable positions or in toxic situations. So um, vulnerability in the workplace comes from a few different things and kind of money is definitely one of those. I definitely, I, there's no way I have brought in the income over my career that like my peer group would have um, because of um, all of the other things I've already described in terms of being at how I can work. I've also obviously being in entrepreneurship you kind of again it's quite spiky um, in terms of like sometimes you're putting money into things sometimes you're getting money out of things um, and if you're doing startups and you spend a long time without taking income from certain projects and you're actually investing in those projects and and I think you find yourself in those vulnerable situations where, or what I've done is I've kind of, because I've, my self-esteem has gone down, because I kind of have this picture in my head that I can't communicate properly or I'm not going to engage properly with others, which actually is completely invalidated when I look at certain outcomes of some of my work. It means that I've just constantly found myself in, um, yeah, it's really like, toxic situations and kind of with toxic cultures. I've had situations in the work where I've been, um, th things like sexual harassment, things like gaslighting, manipulation, um, and also just like not necessarily feeling like I can stand up for myself in certain situations because my energy levels have ended up so depleted because I've been burning out because I've been shutting down. It just puts you in a vulnerable situation and you kind of feel like sometimes I've ended up attaching myself to people who have taken advantage and um, and kind of let that happen and, and not really realise until it was too late. And one of my friends <laughs> who is also uh, autistic uh, said to me um, that I put up with too much for too long um, and this person uh, you know like again this shows up differently for all different people but I think like being in that vulnerable position and putting up with behavior and kind of letting it go on for too long because you because you're feeling too exhausted and like I said you're not sure of your own identity anymore like all of these things that happen and then 
Number 10 is just this feeling that you don't fit in and uh, that might be like special interests or things that other people just don't seem that interested in because um, they might not be <laughs> like that's okay with them but um, the other thing is like the you might not fit some of the norms like I feel like I don't fit certain gender norms I don't fit certain norms in terms of um, like family life and stuff like that I think I feel like when people go and talk in in work in conversations so much of it is about these like milestones you're meant to take with family and, and they'll be talking about like their weddings or they'll be talking about their children or they'll be you know like all of that kind of stuff which feels very alien to me and not something I mean I'm not that interested in it and um, apart from like with my closest friends where I actually know their children and so there's a lot of different reasons why you don't fit in and like I said for, for women it may show up differently if especially if you're masking and mirroring a lot because it's not about not fitting in because you're awkward because you actually might be very very good at um, like covering up um, your artistic traits but they say that people um, often perceive autistic people to just be a bit different even if they're not identifying like something to do with your voice or something to do with your communication style or if there's not any like stims that are particularly obvious they still just identify you as being like a little bit different and that's something people are afraid of so then if as the autistic person you just don't feel the sense of belonging and the sense of fitting in with with people and so that that has definitely made the workplace feel very difficult for me as well and again often that's not down to the fact that there aren't like individuals who are amazing and help you fit in and um and not down to the role that you can play too and I think as I've got older I find it much harder to sort of be that person to initiate um kind of friendships or relationships or those kind of colleague type relationships I just find my energy levels are lower and lower and lower um, or rather I'm aware more quickly of what activities drain my energy and what my boundaries need to be um, but I think I could probably be a little bit more open to um, to kind of initiating in the workplace now um, and honestly like people who, who know me kind of also do know that I am very friendly when I show up I do um, I come across, I think a lot of people would see me as being extroverted, which is definitely not true, but I, and I can stand up on stage and talk and give presentations and do panels and i um, very happy to stand up in front of a team and give direction, very unhappy to sit in a team meeting and talk as a group and like, you know, so it's again sort of the spiky profile thing, like there's some things that are really easy and there's some things that are not and all of that kind of plays into this just not fitting in, like people can't really work you out. Um, and so those are my 10 signs of what it is to be an autistic woman in the workplace. I'd be really interested to know what shows up for you so please write in the comments whether you recognize any of this going on for you in the workplace or whether it's different for you like what signs uh, was it that you had or what signs is it that, that make you think that you might be autistic or signs that you you know that you know you are autistic um, let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe this video so I can keep making more see you soon bye Bye.